This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 166 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate. This is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And this week, we are, you already know, you guys know, we're in the boat. <laughs> And we're moving up the river of time, and the river is taking us to the 2000s. This movie from 2005, a little movie you might have heard of it, you might have not, called V for Vendetta. Alex, I know this is, you've seen it. How long has it been since you've seen it? You told me to pick it up on 4K. So whenever the 4K yeah. release was, that's the first time I ever watched it. I never seen that. Okay, that. Yeah. a little over over a year ago. Yeah, I actually bought this in 4K when it came out, but I have not. Wa- this was my first time watching the 4K. But I saw this movie in the theater back in 2006. I saw it. I've seen it multiple times. Just a little background, of course. V for Vendetta, a comic book adaptation, a gra- graphic novel by written by Alan Moore. If you guys know Alan Moore, he also wrote Watchmen. So he does these kind of alternate reality, you know, uh, stories that are very political, very uh, he's a good writer. And of course, he hates when they adapt his movie. So you won't see his name anywhere on Watchmen in the movie. You won't see his name anywhere in the credits in this movie because he disowns any time they try to make one of his books into a movie. Interesting. Good for him. So, yeah, yeah, little fun fact for you. So, yeah, graphic novel, of course, the stars Hugo Weaving, Natalie Portman, John Hurt. A lot of stuff to talk about here. But before we do so. Let's give you some Rotten Tomato scores. Now, these Rotten Tomato scores, I'll be honest with you, Alex, these are almost exactly what I imagined they might be when I went to go look it up to see what they were. So this has a 73% critic score. Good. It's a fresh. It is a comic book movie before they were like, you know, this was pre-Iron Man and all that. So this was before they blew up like crazy. You know, graphic novel, kind of violent. You know how critics were back in 2006. But the audience score for this is a 90%. So that's where I can kind of see it. This is one of those movies. I remember this came out just after high school for me. And it was one of those movies that like everyone would talk about. Have you seen V for Vendetta? Do you like V? It was like the cool movie to like back in the mid 2000s. So I'm not surprised at all by the 90%. But the question we have, and we're about to explain, is does this hold up in modern, you know, modern times? Now at this point, 17 years old. Can you, I can't believe this movie 17 years old, but yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and go now. Lead character. Now, I scored Natalie Portman. I mean, Natalie Portman's the lead. Did you want to combine her and V? Her storyline is the main storyline, but they're kind of both the leads. Yeah. We'll We'll just combine them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So Hugo Reaving is V. Natalie Portman as Evie. Evie. Right. I gave him a five. They had great chemistry together. Let's just go by character. Hugo Reaving as V, which I know for a fact that's not him under the mask, but his voice under the mask. I think it is him. Uh, he did a lot During of the, the under fighting the mask scenes? stuff. Yeah. Well, remember, he already he did the Matrix. He did all that fighting in the Matrix anyway. So oh, okay. it was well, him a lot. Yeah. So, all right. Well, him as V, amazing. I love his his voice as the character was so fun. Like, you don't have mm-hmm. characters like that. And you know what's pretty crazy, though? And and if they ever remake The Shadow, Hugo yeah. Weaving as The Shadow would be so awesome. Because he has yeah. that voice, that eerie voice. Because this movie proved it. Like, he could he could lead a superhero movie. Like, I mean, him and Anthony Portman. But I liked his character. Very liberal. He had a mission to accomplish. But he had a mission to go. He did it. He had to alter some stuff because he fell in love with Natalie Portman's character. Which I thought, I mean, who could not? I mean, Natalie Portman's hot. So he fell in love with her. So I was like, okay, that's cool. But my man Hugo's fighting techniques. I mean, we're going to talk about it in action sequences. But man, I loved it. I thought it was good. He was great in it. Again, his morals to the to his his revenge and liberal fighting and all this stuff with the government against John Hurt's character. I thought it was cool. I liked it. Very political movie. This movie is very political. So I gave him a five. Natalie Portman was just cute. I love she was thrown into this whole mix and did not know what the hell was going on. But her her story kind of tied into the V character. I guess her parents and everything. Yeah. So with that, I gave him a five together and solo five across the board. Yeah. So fun fact, James Purefoy was originally cast as V 
Six weeks into filming, he dropped out because he didn't like working with the mask on. So Hugo Weaving actually replaced him when they already started filming it. Redubbed all his lines Mm -hmm. and then did the rest of the acting. So it was him in the suit. But you could kind of tell because when he's talking, it sounds like he's talking from behind the mask. Mm. So yeah, it was he did it. Look, Hugo Weaving, you're right. His voice is just fantastic. He's great in the role. I love V. He's interesting. For a, for a, you know, one thing we talk about a lot of times when we're talking about lead characters, like backstories and, you know, is it, his backstory exists, but you still don't know any details about him, right? Like, you don't know his real name. It's not V, obviously. That's just the, the number on the door of, of his cell in the, you know, in the hospital. He has amnesia. They explain in the backstory. So he doesn't remember where he came from. He doesn't remember if he has a family. He could have a wife and kids out there. So he, he does not know, right? And he's all burnt up and he wears this costume. And it's, he, first of all, visually, one of the coolest looking characters yeah. in, you know, but you show people that they know exactly what movie that's from. It's awesome. So he's great. Natalie Portman. I've always loved Natalie Portman since I was a kid. I actually grew up with like uh, with like the professional. And then, of course, she was in Heat. And then she was in Star Wars. You know, when she was in The Phantom Menace, I was only 12. So like I grew up watching Natalie Portman. I always loved her. I loved her in this. Her backstory is great, especially tying in with this, you know, with this main storyline of this, you know, uh, authoritarian government, which we'll get into in the story. But, you know, with her parents, with what happened to her family, with her eventually almost becoming free by, you know, with what V does with her. And I just love I love their dynamic together. Everything about it. I, I give them a five as well. I think as far as like characters you have to follow for a two hour movie, you can't do much. I mean, much better. They are to me perfect for this movie. Both of them. Fantastic. Five. Okay. Main villain. Now, John Hurt is like the main villain. But really, the whole government's the villain, if you think about it. But uh, go ahead. Yeah. In terms of John Hurt, he plays Adam Slut- Slutler. Slutler? Something like that. Stu- uh, Stutler. Yeah. Something like that. Stutler. Right? It's supposed to sound like Adolf Hitler. That's what they were going for. Oh, okay. Well, I called him Adam. Yeah. But he plays yeah, that's, no, that's that right. Ca- it's Adam. Yeah, I give him a three. First of all, he's not in the whole movie. And when they do show him, he's on TV screens, screaming yeah. the shit out of the TV. And then they put him in the, then they bring him into the uh, train station. They shoot him in the head. They kill them. Yeah. So I'm like fucking useless. This damn guy is useless because he doesn't fight B at all. No. V basically goes up to him and tells the other guy to shoot him. And I was just like, what the hell is going on here? But honestly, the terms of John Hurt, I mean, John Hurt was okay. Yeah, like he was like Hitler. Um, He accomplished. He wanted everyone dead if they wore the mask. They That's what happened. That's pretty much it. I mean, he was, he was very strong as the president or whatever he was, the government, like the head dude. He was very strong. Uh, uh, head chance, head supreme chancellor yeah he was really good john hurt is a very great actor i know he died so i don't want people to be like oh but you know he died i know he's dead he's great but he's any role he was in he was phenomenal i mean harry potter is in one of his big roles as him the wand alien was another he's a chest bursting dude yep. eating the meatloaf which i was like oh that was yep. bad meatloaf but still the kingdom of the crystal skull the kingdom of the crystal <laughs> yeah he was good in that too he was he, good in it I mean, yeah he yeah. was good but again every any role he touches he was phenomenal and he was great yeah. in this too like he was just yeah. he, he he shined so i think he was very great so i gave him a three i thought he was good i always love him in hellboy hellboy one and two he's like as who the was he character he was the dad hellboy's dad in the original hellboy oh really the ron perlman one yeah he's like the, the the guy who found him when he was a little kid look john hurt this was interesting because this movie is heavily inspired by a lot of other properties of course the parallels you know in the movie they talk about the count of monte cristo and like the, there's a lot of parallels to that but 1984 if you've ever seen 1984 an 80s sci-fi dystopian future it's very similar and the funny thing is that john hurt is in that movie as the main character and now he's the main villain in a very similar movie so i thought that was kind of cool for them to cast john hurt in that role you know what i mean it was neat. If you've seen 1984, it was a cool little twist. I agree with you in the sense that he, him as an individual, he's very good. The performance is very good. He's always on a big TV screen yelling at people. He does command the screen, though, when he is on there, yeah. you know, when he's doing his speeches and he's very good. I gave the villain a four, but I also factored in sort of what he represents and that whole like the, the, the oppressive nation. government. Yeah. yeah, it's still not a five for me, but. It is a four because I do think that whole idea is very scary, first of all, and very well executed in this in a, in a comic book 
action movie. Yeah. They did a great job. It's got, you know, well, we'll go more into storyline. But yeah, I gave him a four. I think he's good in the role. But I agree with you. Like, he pretty much, the most toughest thing he does is bust a glass of milk in his hand and then he gets shot yeah. pretty much. Uh, that's it. So I'll give him a four though. Okay, action scene. Oh my God. All right, let's get this straight. Action in this movie is fucking amazing in this. And this dude is just using these Raphael types knives. I don't know what the hell they call them. I just call them the Raphaels because I always know them with the three, whatever the hell they are, like whatever. Those are size. Yeah, size, uh, yeah. whatever. And I was like, yo, I was like, my man is crazy. He goes, great fighting sequences. Let me just say, they were executed perfect. When they're in a new station and he's whooping those cops' asses, I said, phenomenal. When he was in that train scene, I said, that's it. When he's oh, in some super end? fast motion and he's getting yes. shot up, and I said, oh, my God. I said, this is awesome. My man V is V for Van Damme because that's how he's good. <laughs> he's Van Damme good. I liked him a lot, man. I gave it a five. I Ooh. think the fighting ta- I think the fighting was awesome. You didn't get much fighting. I don't want people to be like, it's a straight out war movie or him superhero movie. It's not. But when the fighting happens... And he has to do it. That's where I'm giving it a five. I, I think I'm not going over the quantity on this one. I'm going for quality on this. And that's why I'm giving sure. it a five. Because the, the, the execution was perfect. It's not up the fucking face of the character. It is back. And you get to see everything executed gory with the slicing and dicing. and Oh, man. I loved it. I thought it was really good. So I gave it a five. Okay. Fair. Not going to argue. <laughs> One thing I'll say is, yeah, there's three fights in this whole movie. Yeah, um, <clears throat> There's two big explosions, right? Because he blows up the, mm-hmm. the first tower early in the movie, and then he blows up the parliament building. Other than that, there is three fights. There's the one in the alley in the beginning when he saves Evie. Short, but cool. Then you have the fight in the TV station. Also pretty short, but very, very cool. And then you have the last one where they all shoot him, and he's like, if I'm still standing at the end then you're going to die. And then when he gets shot, he's just like, it's my turn. And he just goes nuts and starts killing everybody and blood splattering everywhere. You're right. I love the way it's shot. Uh, James McTeague directed this. Yeah. I think he's not done a lot of other stuff. I know he did Ninja Assassin later, but I'm surprised he didn't do more big movies, to be honest. Like, I like his style. I think yeah. his style is really good. I enjoy the action scenes in this. Because there's not a ton, I gave it a four, mostly for the same reasons as you. I just have a different score. I thought the execution... Yeah. was great. Loved it. Every time he starts fighting people, I'm like, yes, this is awesome. But it's just three fights, really. And yeah. there's a lot of talking in this movie. So yeah. with that being said, I gave it a four. You gave it a five. Let's get let's get into the talking and go into storyline. All right, so a storyline. I'm going to be 100% honest with you in this. At times, I was kind of lost. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And when Hugo is talking, it's very riddled speech very he's a lot of um, alliteration yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and he's again he's with the whole mountain cop monte crisco which i love the movie uh, i didn't see that version but i saw the new one uh the later remake. on yeah the remake yeah. i thought that was good too but Great. yeah in terms of the movie it's i gave it a three now if i rewatch it again and put on the subtitles <laughs> then i'll understand what is going on i'll give it maybe a higher score but for right now I gave it a three. I know he was a liberal guy. I know he was trying to bring down the government. He wanted to set everyone free. I kind of get the gist of that's what the the whole premise of the story was. He wanted to overthrow the government so everyone could be free and they could do whatever the hell they want. Um, So that's where I got from it. Now, in terms of the director, I totally agree with you 100%. He reminds me of Zack Snyder when I saw this movie. But Zack Snyder is very comic book with the with the color grading and everything. But. This remind me a lot of uh, Zack Snyder. Very stylized. I, yes, very. And I'm, I agree with you. I like directors like this because you feel like you are reading like a graphic novel, like Matt Reeves with Batman. That is so uh, a graphic novel Batman on screen. Granted, it was like three hours long, but again, very style, like you said. But yeah. the actual movie itself storyline. I thought it was good enough. I enjoyed for what I what I was watching. And I had kids screaming everywhere. So I should have just put the subtitles from the beginning. Yeah. But from what I gathered for the first 40 minutes and then I finished it off when they went to sleep, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And it got to the point. And I love it. The ending of him going with the train and basically did what his mission was. Everyone was free. And yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. They blew up the Big Ben building, was it? That was the Ben. Uh, the parliament. Yeah, the parliament building. That's like the... Iconic. I guess equivalent to in the U.S. of like not the Pent, not the White House, the maybe Capitol? like the Capitol building. Yeah. yeah okay. Like yeah. I thought that was very iconic. That a whole blow up the whole thing. So yeah, I give it a three yeah. for good. 
All right, here's where we just differ a bit. A uh, strong five for me. I okay. love this. Now, this was written by the Wachowskis, who at the time they wrote it were still the Wachowski brothers, so they weren't the sisters yet, because at the end it said Andy and Larry. I was like, oh, they were still the brothers. Yeah, they wrote this movie, didn't direct it. I think, I don't know if they were ever on, like, attached to direct it, and I would have been okay with it, because, you know, this was, this mid, it was after Matrix, but still, it was when they were in their you know, wheelhouse, I feel like, as directors. But they wrote it. James McTeague came and directed it. It's just such... It's crazy how this movie's 17 years old, super relevant, even yeah. now, and it doesn't really matter your personal politics. The ideas are the same. That the government and overreach of government and suppression of ideas and freedoms and things like that. You know what I mean? And whichever side you fall, it's very relevant. I think it's very topical. It's, it's really interesting that, well, even if you think about it, even like I said, I, I mentioned 1984 and that book was written so long ago. And even that it's still very relevant today. So I think uh, it's well written because you can watch it now and it's not like dated in my opinion. It's not dated at all. Story-wise again, great characters. All the characters are interesting. There's a good mystery, right? Because the whole thing is uh, you got the cop played by Stephen Ray and he's trying to figure out, you know, catch the terrorist, figure out who he is, what he's doing. You get little snippets of his backstory, what happened at the lab the chemical weapons and all that kind of stuff and then the letter i love the scenes with the letters yeah. where natalie portman's reading the letters and like it just it's a very well written well thought out storyline that it doesn't have like it's not full of holes everything makes sense i agree with you the dialogue could be much especially from him especially early when he's just doing like v words over and over and over i would definitely suggest watching it again with subtitles just to make sure you get everything but I mean, I could see where you're coming from, though. It's not like it is dense. There's a lot going on. So I love it. Um, you liked it. I think you might like it a little more on a rewatch with if you can get all the dialogue. But it is a dialogue heavy movie. It's for very, an action film honestly. for a comic book movie. It's a very yeah. Dialogue. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of exactly. There's a lot of it's it's really like if you think about it, though, it's a graphic novel. The movie's two hours. It's like they got probably mostly everything in there. You know what I mean? Which yeah. that's going to require you to have a lot of dialogue so uh five for me three for you uh overall overall i gave it a four i think with the with the storyline the lead characters natalie portman and hugo reaving as v and evie i think that's what drew me to the movie and i love comic book movies that are very one-off right like just like when you read a comic book you can just put it on there's no sequels it's not open for a sequel. There is nothing. And I love it. it. And that's the thing I like about graphic novels. And the way it's shot, it was amazing. The action sequences were great. Again, I have to rewatch it just for the text, just to re, re just to get the storyline down pack again. But I just I do got the gist of it. But again, there was a lot of great imagery into the film that's very parallel to even the Casa Montiano, um Master Monte Cristo into yeah, the film. And I thought it worked great. John Hurt was really good. I mean, you can't say nothing with that. And then they had Ste uh, Steve Stephen Ray Frey. Yeah, he was great. Oh, yeah, he was really good. I mean, every time you see him on screen, he was he was great. Also, um, and then it has your boy, which I know you hated, hated him in Underworld Awakening as the as the as the villain. Oh, the cop. That's Stephen Ray. Yeah. That's Stephen. You're talking about the other guy, uh, Fry, Fry or something like yeah, that. Right? Yeah, Stephen Fry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. Yeah, 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 good. He's good. Stephen yeah. Ray is, yeah, he was, if, I, well, I hated him in Underworld. I, he was okay in this. But, yeah, he was all right. Yeah. yeah, he didn't do much either. I mean, no, he just always just, plays like a sad sack looking guy. A sad cop. That's why, yeah, he just looks like, he looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what he does, he, he always yeah. looks like he's just mad trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, he's horrible. Look, I gave it a four overall. I think this is a great comic book movie, but yeah, four. Yeah, and a little fun fact from our from our buddy Rob here the the court the action scenes were choreographed by David Leach and Chad Stahelski, of course, directors of John Wick. So you remember they worked with the Wachowskis. They did a lot of the Matrix stuff, and it's no surprise Chad was Neil fighting. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. it's no surprise. I bet you there were some of these guards and stuff that were fighting in this movie too, because they were both stuntmen. So. There you go. It's no wonder it's pretty awesome when, yeah, <laughs> when they I mean, start fighting. Yeah, it's a four and a half for me. It's not quite perfect. You know, I do reserve my fives. Uh, this is close. It's a nine. I always thought it's a nine out of ten. You know, four and a half. I love this movie. I don't watch it very often because I do like to space it out. And then when I watch it, it's like, oh, this is like watching it for the first time mm. again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do enjoy it a lot. The performances are great. There's humor. There's great action. 
There's a good storyline for your brain. You know, like for a comic book movie, it definitely makes you use your brain, which I can appreciate. You know, it's not dumb. It's not big, loud and dumb. That's one thing V for Vendetta is not. Also, one of the best food porn scenes ever when he's making the little egg in a basket and the bread. (laughs) You ever ate that? Oh, my God. Yes, it's amazing, by you the did? way. I, we, I cooked it after seeing this movie. You just got to cut a little hole in the bread. You put the egg in the pan. You butter the bread, and you just watch it. You just watch it go. It is so freaking good. <laughs> egg in a basket. It's fantastic. I love a good food scene in a movie. So, yeah, it's great. I love this movie. So, four and a half for me, four for you. Okay, what is your total total point? You, you want to hear some funny, uh, 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 an actual yeah. trivia thing? Yeah, yeah. So, the domino scene where Hugo Weaving tips it over. Oh, the dominoes, yep. Right? Uh, the black and red dominoes to form the giant letter V involved 22,000 dominoes. Okay. It took four professional domino assemblers, 200 hours to set it up just to do that one scene. Just to do that flick it. And it does look cool. 200 hours. That's what, like a week? Gosh, that's 10 days. Took him 10 days to form the V. Yeah. For him to knock it over. That was awesome though. Imagine if this shit didn't work. (laughs) You back Imagine to I had to re- reset it up and film it again. It's like another two hundred hours. I did not like this. <laughs> We're gonna uh, go film some more scenes. You guys finished building the dominoes. Oh my god! And they yeah. said the cast and crew were only allowed to shoot near the British Parliament and the clock tower from midnight four a.m. <laughs> to I mean from midnight to four thirty a.m. And that makes sense. O- it all happens at night. <laughs> yeah, and they could yeah. only stop traffic for four minutes at a time. That so they was really a, that filmed it in England. Hard. Pretty that good. That must hard. But anyway, like. my total points was a 20 out of a 25. All right, 22 and a half for your boy. 22 and a half. I love this film. I'm glad people voted for it because it's great. Yeah, so coming up next, of course, next James Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me, starring Roger Moore and some other people. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Hopefully not J.W. Peppa. And also, <laughs> our next 2000s movie, if you watched our recent episode about favorite movie quotes, I did quote this movie. Uh, it's a little movie, Russell Crowe, Gladiator, from the year 2000. I think it was exactly in 2000. Just made the cut. We did Braveheart. We did, now we're doing Gladiator. I don't know. I think they always get lumped together because they always come out in like two packs and stuff like that because they're both okay. from Paramount. and You know yeah. what I mean? But I have not seen Gladiator in a long time. So I'm actually really looking forward to to uh, a, a rewatch of this one. Well, I'm, I'll say this. You don't got J.W. J. Pepper, but they oh introduced gosh. one of the best, Bond Henchmen. Ooh. Yeah. As long as it ain't J.W. Pepper from Louisiana Police <laughs> Department. I don't want to see that guy ever again. No, that it's was- the first time they uh, introduced Jaws. Oh, okay. I don't know I've if seen, you know I've who Jaws is. played Jaws in GoldenEye. Yeah, so if yeah. you know that Jaws, this is the first time you get to see him on screen as Jaws. Oh, he's a big guy. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, and then, of course, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. I haven't seen it. I've seen Joaquin it once. Phoenix. I haven't seen it in forever. Yeah, it's funny. little funny thing is, I saw it for the first time on 4K. <laughs> so this is the second time I watched oh, the dang. movie. Yeah. I think I saw this in high school, in like oh, summer geez. school. I went to summer school my junior year. I think our teacher was just like, here, watch Gladiator. And I was like, this movie's awesome. And then I loved it. So, yeah. So this is going to be the second time you're watching it. But other than that, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys, head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks for the video version of the podcast. Now we have our official website at www.geeksandflicks.com where we have all the podcast, video, and audio there for you. And then, of course, we have merch. And, of course, if you want to join our Patreon, you can just go to the website also, www.geeksandflicks.com. Dot com. Other than that, that's your host, Nate, from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alex Figueroa. Be awesome to each other and geek out. <laughs>